Number nine, which of the following nuclei lie within the band of stability? And now we have carbon-14. You might have heard of carbon-14, um, but either way, we need to find out if this is going to be stable or not. If it's stable, it's going to be within the band of stability. And if it's not, unfortunately, it's not in the band of stability. But here is the band of stability. There's only a select few, those are the blue, that are stable isotopes. All the other ones, we got a lot of crazies over here, right? All these greens, those are unstable isotopes. So way more unstable isotopes out there than stable ones. But now, if you want to find out if you're in the band of stability, the first thing you have to find out is the total number of protons and neutrons. Now, in this case, they say that we have carbon, right? And it tells us we have carbon-14. Now, if you have it in this type of notation, the number at the end of the, of the element is always going to be your atomic mass. So, they are saying that we have 14 total number of protons and neutrons because your atomic mass is always going to be the total number of protons plus the total number of neutrons. But I still need to find out how many of each I have. Well, if we wrote this notation out in kind of like our nuclide notation, we have a carbon, that stands for C, and the atomic mass always goes on the top. But there's one number that's missing, right? Usually there's two numbers on the left-hand side here. The bottom one is always your atomic number. So that's the number that they didn't give us. But that's okay because every element has its own unique atomic number. And that we got to go on the periodic table for. So I go on the periodic table. Do you have yours? Whip that thing out, right? Um, we go to the periodic table and I see that carbon's atomic number is six. And six for the atomic number is the total number of protons. So I know that I have six protons. But now the question is, how many neutrons do I have? Well, if I have 14, um, if I have 14 total protons and neutrons and I got six protons, what would I do to these two numbers? Yeah, I would just subtract them, right? So 14 minus six is what, eight? So that tells me that I have eight neutrons. Okay, so we have six protons and eight neutrons. Now, the thing is that generally, nine times out of ten, right, if you have one of your protons or neutrons being a magic number, then that, um, that nucleus and that isotope will be stable. Now, I do want to point out here that carbon-14 is one of your exceptions to the rule because I do see eight. I do see eight as a magic number, right? And generally speaking, if you do have one um, magic number, it's stable, right? But we could always go to the band of stability just to double check. Now, if I go to the band of stability and I try to find out where six protons and eight neutrons are, right? Now, these are going up by twos because I see that there's five, I believe that there's five steps here, right? So if I go one, two, three, four, five. So there have to go up by, up by twos. So I'm going to go two, four, six. Here's the six right here. And looks like it's a one for one ratio as you go down below, right? Even though it's a little bit small, you might be able to, you know, zoom in on the video here. Um, but it, it clearly is a one-to-one -one relationship all the way down here. That's what this black line is all about. This is a one, oh, this is a one-to-one -one line, which means that for every amount of proton you have, you have that total number of neutrons. So if you have two protons, you should have two neutrons. If you have four protons, you have four neutrons. But as you go up and up and up and your atom becomes larger and larger, the one-to-one -one ratio doesn't exist anymore for stability. But down here, it totally does. And for carbon to be stable, even though it's got that, those eight neutrons, it's outside of the band of stability. It would be like up here in this green area. And that's a big no-no. The stable one for carbon is carbon-12, where you have six protons and six neutrons. 
So this is one of the exceptions. This is a big fat no. So I just want to say that even though we do have a magic number, I would just know your exceptions. Carbon-14 is going to be the exception to the rule because you're all the way down here. But as you go up and up and up, if you have magic numbers, that's it. You know, with, with the exceptions of where your cap-offs are, you know, with your atomic numbers and your masses. But as far as this goes, this is not a stable isotope. And uh, more into this chapter, we will see, you know, carbon-14 a lot with the math in this chapter and nuclear chemistry. But I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. I look forward to helping you in more lessons, and I hope you're having a great day out there. Um, we just opened memberships. I just want to, you know, get the word out there that if you want to become a member, you can. Um, not obligated, not mandatory, but any little bit helps us. And then in return, it will help you out as well. We got tons of perks um, in the memberships. There's four tiers, so go check it out. Doesn't hurt, right? Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.